The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 2, Timothy, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 says we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in these last days we are to be aware of Satan's system and not be ignorant and fall prey into his system. So one of the things I would like to talk about is the ferment. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> the Bible says right here in verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, notice right here, when God created this firmament, this firmament took place on the second day. And we see the reading right here from verses 6 through 8. 6 through 8. Now, I mentioned before what firmament meant was like, uh, like space. That's why I mentioned before. Now, there were people who mentioned that I interpreted that wrong because of the Hebrew word. <clears throat> the Hebrew word actually says vault. The thing is, however, is that Hebrew has multiple interpretations. So as King James Bible believers, we don't go by Greek or Hebrew lexicons. Amen. We go by what the Bible actually says. Amen. So I study Greek and Hebrew. Greek and Hebrew, you must understand, have multiple meanings. So another meaning in uh, Hebrew for that word is actually referring to uh, an opening, a stretching out, a stretching out, an expansion, an expanse. And it even says the sky. So that's what firmament means. Now, here's the thing, is that what's very interesting concerning about the firmament right here, so then we'll see it right here as something expansion. Now, think about this. Why did God put a firmament? And this makes sense that it's like an expansion in between. The reason why is he's dividing waters here. Let's read that again. <clears throat> but let's start off at verse... Uh, two, to make it all clear. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So notice there's waters all over in this universe right here. But what God did with these waters, notice, is that in verse 7, uh, verse 6, the last part of verse 6 says, let it divide the waters from the waters. This firmament is going to be in between that will divide waters from waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. So notice he said waters which were under, waters above. The waters below, we know for a matter of fact that this is referring to the sea or the ocean in our earth. So then here's the earth right here and then the sea. And then the Bible says he made dry land to come out of the ground, out of the water. And God called the dry land earth. So we're going to keep reading right here. That's what this water below is. Verse <clears throat> 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be, uh, be gathered together unto one place. So notice it's talking about the waters below, right? And let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth. See, right here. So this is referring to the waters below. Now remember, God says he put a firmament in between the waters, right? So this is all the firmament. This is all the waters below. And this is the earth. He says that he put waters above the firmament. So let me just make this blue here. That way people won't get lost. People will kind of get the gist here. So this is waters below. Now, I would encourage to watch uh, deeps in outer space in my teaching. That would give a much better teaching about the firmament. But what I'm going to do here concerning the firmament is that I'm trying to teach right here that there is some kind of expansion in between. There is no doubt there is some sort of expansion in between. The reason why, I'm going to explain a little more here. So whatever this firmament is, whether it be rock solid or empty vacuum or watery or whatnot, all we know is that this firmament is in between. There's waters above and waters below. Now, what do I believe about this firmament? What I believe is this, is that, remember, all of this was water, right? Pretend there was no firmament. It was all water. 
What God did was then he started to put something here that would divide it. So here is all this water, and all of this water is going up. And because of all this water going up right here, then you got the waters above and the waters below. But he had to take all the waters up and then put all the waters down. So in between here is liquidy. There's going to be some sort of a water in between here, you got to understand. Now, what's really interesting is that, um, like I told you before, is that uh, I do not believe in everything concerning the flat earth. And I studied everything about it. It's really interesting, a lot of things. And I had uh, a few members here who talked about flat earth as well. And they showed me some things, which is very interesting. But I do believe this is that the stuff that they say, there's an element of truth behind it. So one thing that you got to understand in studying online, obviously, is you can't believe everything that you watch and hear. But here's the thing is that you can't be ignorant either. So there's always an element of truth behind something. So with the flat earth, they teach this, is that the firmament is rock solid, right? So there's this rock solid, and uh, that's where the stars are located as well. Now, this is what I believe. What I believe is this. I think that uh, scientists, uh, and then you got the flat earthers, and then you got some of the Christians who kind of have some things mixed up. Because I believe there's an element of truth behind all of it. Yeah. Here's the idea. The idea is this. They're right that it's rock solid. They're also right that it, there's something, some kind of liquid depth in there. Do you know why? Because God, see, he divided the water so it was going up. So there's some trace of water in between over there. That's the reason why the scientists would talk about that there is some water out there at the edge of the universe. And then that's the reason why the flat earthers talk about a rock solid area. Because what's happening here is that it's getting heavier and heavier. The lightest area is for us on Earth, right? This is where we can breathe and all that. So yay, we're over here. <laughs> and then you got uh, the sky, right? So that's the first heaven right here. Now the Bible says this, where God's throne is located, where God's throne is located, that's going to be the third heaven. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So where God is, is known as the third heaven. It's not second, it's third. So then wait a minute, if the sky is first, <clears throat> and this one's the third, then which one's the second, right? So now keep your hand at Genesis 1, because I'm going to show you something interesting there too. We're going to come back. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> The Bible says right here in verse 2, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to where? The third, the third heaven. So when, God, when Paul went to see God Almighty, he went up to the third heaven. Now the first heaven right here, let's go back to verse 7 and 8. So that's the third heaven. The first heaven is right here. Now, here's the interesting thing then. Then where's the second heaven? God mentioned firmament, right? Remember, he said he created a firmament. This firmament, you got to understand, is already a dead giveaway. It called it heaven. There's your second heaven. There's your second heaven right here. OK, so let's look at um, verse 8. And God called the firmament what? Heaven, see? So here's something you got to understand is that when the Bible talks about heaven, it's always some kind of open expanse area. The Bible talks about rain coming out of heaven. The birds fly into heaven. So we know that's obviously the sky. That's the first heaven. And then we, the Bible talks about that where God is in heaven and where the saints will be shouting the victory in heaven. Well, obviously, that's an expanse. That's an open area. So that's the same thing, too. This firmament, you got to understand, is an expanse, an open area. But the thing is this, is that when God divided the waters from the waters, it's getting heavier and heavier. 
That's why it gets colder and colder as well when you go through, this, when you go through outer space. And then finally, you hit that ice. It gets colder and colder, and then you hit that ice area. So that's what, I, that's what I'm showing right here. So everyone has an element of truth in there. But it's not putting all the pieces together and seeing it from a clear picture of the Bible. This whole thing you understand is the firmament. So it's light for us right here where we can breathe and all that. But then when you go beyond the earth, it's getting heavy and heavy. And then you hit a barrier over there. And then after that, then you go throughout here, what NASA would call it space, scientists call it space. And then I don't care what you call it, OK? I don't care what you call it. I mean, I'll just say space here, OK, just for the normal people's sake. So right here, you hit the space. And then it gets heavier and heavier. Then you see what's really interesting is um, some flat earthers talk about that when you look at certain stars and planet, there's like this reflection. There's like this watery movement, et cetera. And then you hit right here the rock solid area. And that's what? Third heaven's floor, sea of glass. Look at Revelation. Revelation. So that makes a lot of sense to me. So that's what I believe concerning this. So my stance, you know, is still like the same concerning the earth. I have no stance concerning it. But I do know this. There is some part of expansion here. There is no doubt about that. It also, uh, it also would uh, confirm the conspiracy concerning about these UFOs, these aliens. So these things are actually real cases, you got to understand, of demonic creatures and demonic activity. I don't want to undermine that fact. I don't want to undermine the fact of demonic activity out there in this firmament. I don't want to undermine that fact. Let's look at uh, Revelation. And notice what the Word of God says at chapter 4, Revelation chapter 4. <clears throat> the Bible says right here in verse uh, 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice, was, which I heard, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in where? Heaven. So it's right here. Obviously, it's not like all glass right here. It's all expansions, expansion right there. So this is obviously the third heaven where God is. But let's keep reading. You'll notice right here that at verse 6, and before the throne there was a what? Sea of glass like unto crystal. And the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So right here, before the presence of the throne right here is the sea of glass. There's your waters above. See? There's your waters above. So your waters above is right here. This is the glass. This is the hard area that you hit. I think that by allowing the fact that there is a hardening surface as well as a liquidy leftover surface throughout outer space, as well as the fact that there is some sort of expansion in this firmament, it will leave open to all cases concerning conspiracies and demonic activity that we don't be ignorant about. So I believe that would leave an open door for everything so that we don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. A lot of demonic activity, what he's doing out here in this firmament, you got to understand. Uh, another thing is that I, I have not heard a satisfying answer concerning about he hangeth the earth upon nothing. Uh, I never heard a really satisfying answer for that one. The Bible also says that this is called heaven, the firmament. And every time you look up heaven in the Bible, it's always an expansion. Another thing is this, is that I don't know where you're going to put the darkness. Genesis chapter 1, you, uh, when we look back right here, right before he created... Right, right before he created the firmament, what did he do? In verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the what? Darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Now you've got to realize this, there was no sun, moon, and stars that time. So there was no kind of sunlight or anything like that. But he did make light. And not only that, he made Darkness, But not only that, he divided light from darkness. How did he do that? Why, um, in the other video I showed you, what is the light at? Uh, John chapter 1, the Bible says uh, that Jesus Christ is light. God is light, and in him is no darkness. 
Revelation chapter 21, 22. In this third heaven, there shall be no night there. It actually said that, night, no night there. So this is where all the light is. But, so he divided the light right here. We see that clearly. But where's the darkness? See, yeah, there you go. See, that makes sense. So where are you going to put the darkness then? It's got to be right here. So there's no doubt there's some kind of heaven expansion over there. That one I do know as a matter of fact. There has to be. And not only that, if I hide this fact, then it's going to hide the fact concerning demonic activity, what he's doing throughout what, whatever you want to call it, black cosmos, outer space, galaxy, universe, whatever it is. I, but I don't go by NASA's terms on what is right and wrong right there. I only go by what the word of God is. Amen. The word of God right here is concerning second heaven. He calls this firmament, and there's no doubt an expansion. If I ever say space, universe, cosmos, or something like that, I don't want people to misunderstand me that, oh, you're going by NASA's terms, blah, 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 blah. I don't trust NASA with my left foot, okay? I really don't. But the thing is this, is that you got to understand this. What people don't understand, because I took academia, okay? People don't just flat out lie in academia. And Satan, he doesn't flat out lie. What he does, yeah, you got it. He lies by giving you an element of truth. Okay, you got to understand this. There's an element of truth behind heresies too. I don't know if you understood that. Even a heresy has an element of truth behind it. Satan lied to Eve that uh, you're not going to die, but he sure had an element of truth in his statement, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See that? So you got to understand that we shouldn't be ignorant of Satan's devices right here. This, I see, harmonizes and makes sense with all kinds of conspiracies on what I study. This would just make a lot more sense to me right here.